vector and matrix norms. We can measure the size of a vector using a function called norm. And the LP norm, the most general form of the vector norm, is defined as follows. First of all, the notation for norm is these two vertical lines on the left and right side of the vector symbol. And we have this sub, uh, subscript p here, which defines the p value of the norm. So for example, in the case of an Euclidean norm, this would be p equal 2. So we would have a 2 instead of the p here. And then the definition of the p norm is simply, we take all the elements of the original vector x, we take the absolute value of these elements and take those to the power of p, and then we sum them up. And finally, we take the result to the power of 1 over p. We can see through this equation that a norm, a vector norm maps vectors to non-negative values. And we can interpret this as measuring the distance to the origin according to this particular p norm. Mathematically, a norm f satisfies several conditions. First, if the norm of a vector equals zero, then the vector must also equal zero. If the distance to the origin is zero, then the vector itself must be zero in all of its elements. Furthermore, the triangle inequality holds. The norm of vectors x plus y is smaller or equal to the norm of the individual vectors summed up. And finally, for each scalar alpha, the norm of the vector multiplied with alpha must be equal to alpha absolute times the norm of the vector itself. Let's look at some examples. Here we see an example for the L1 norm, the absolute norm, the L2 norm, so called the Euclidean norm, which measures, measures Euclidean distances, and the L infinity or maximum norm here at the bottom and on the right. I always um, show, show this norm for the two-dimensional space that's illustrated here on the left. What we can also see is that for the Euclidean norm here in the middle, we can also write this as the inner product of the vector transposed with itself and the square root of that. We can now visualize these norms, in this case for the two-dimensional scenario, by drawing the one-level sets. That means the line or the set of all points where the norm is equal to 1. And we do this here for the L1 norm, the L2 norm, and the L infinity norm. And you can see that this leads to these different shapes. Maybe not surprisingly, the L2 norm leads to a circle because we have this quadratic expression here. And if we set this equal to constant 1, then we get a circle because this is the circle equation. Um, and for the L1 norm, we get this diamond shape here in red because, for example, the vector 1, 0 has norm 1, but the vector 0, 5, 0, 5 also has norm 1, and the vector 0, 1 also has norm 1. And similarly for the negative sides because we take the absolute value of each element. And then finally, we have the blue square, which is illustrating the maximum norm. And we can see, for example, that all points on this line here, for all points on this line, the x2 coordinate doesn't matter because the x1 coordinate is already 1. So um, all of the points on this line, for all points on this line here, the L infinity norm is equal to 1. Finally, some remarks. The dot product of two vectors x and y can also be written in terms of norms. So we have x transpose y equal the norm of the vector x itself, the Euclidean norm, and the Euclidean norm multiplied with the Euclidean norm of the vector y itself times the cosine of the vector of the angle theta, where theta is the angle that lies between these two vectors x and y. And the size of a matrix can also be measured. And one common measure for the size of a matrix is the Frobenius norm, which you can think as the straightforward extension of the L2 vector norm to matrices, 
we write this with the f subscript and it's simply the square root of the sum of squares of all individual elements of the matrix A.